Hi everyone, welcome to the Enchanted Bayou. My name is Cassandra. If you're new here, thank you for joining me today. If you have been here before, we really appreciate you coming back. Love having you here. And we're gonna talk about some very interesting facts today. Today I'm going to dive into the Abby Petito timeline and really get into the details because I don't know about you, but a lot of this has been bothering me. I've been keeping track of it and I'm going to get you guys up to date the best that I can. You know, things are seem to be changing by the minute. So we're going to go through everything as of this second that I'm recording this video and go through the timeline. Now I know a lot of you are going to be like, okay, where's the spirit box, Cassandra? Well, the spirit box is coming, okay? The spirit box will be coming up after this video. So I will be posting a second video with the spirit box. So if that's something that you're interested in, then please come join us for the second video. But today, we're just going to go over the timeline. Now, who is Gabby Petito? Well, Gabby Petito was actually born in New York in March of 1999 and that makes her 22 years old when all this happened as of today. And she was a pharmacy tech. She met this man named Brian Laundry, and he is also her age. He and her hit it off and they started dating in 2019 and in July of 2020 they got engaged. A year later they decided that they wanted to go on a van life trip together. So they worked and they saved up. Gabby was a pharmacy tech. She was working and saving up and finally in July of 2021 they were going to make their dream come true of starting a YouTube channel and posting a whole bunch of stuff on Instagram of their entire van life trip that they were going to do around the country. So that's where everything got started and how everything got started. Why are we talking about Gabby? Well Gabby went missing. So we're going to go back to from all the details of when we found out that she was missing and even before that and then go forward. Okay, so let's get into the timeline. So on August 12th of this year, she and Brian were driving around Moab, Utah and a caller had reported that he had seen a man slapping a woman and them getting into a fight and the caller reported this to the police. The police found and caught up with the couple and it happened to be Gabby and Brian. Now, you can go and you can watch the clips about it. It's, you know, Gabby is crying, she's upset. It looks like she wounded Brian. He's got some scratches on his face. Nothing major or anything. Now, what happened from there? In Utah, the police, unless it is serious injury, the police don't have to take anyone away and put them in prison for the night or anything like that. So what they did do though is they recommended that the two split up for the night and they took Brian to a hotel, Gabby stayed in her van, and then the two of them caught back up the next day with each other. But the police just wanted to give them some time to cool off because they really needed it. You know, they Gabby seemed very, very upset. And according to the police and the body cam footage, it shows that basically the fight was, you know, a ridiculous little couple fight. Uh, Brian's feet were dirty and he got into the van. Gabby got upset about it. He was trying to tell her to calm down. They were both fighting. Uh, there was no report in the body cam that I saw of Gabby saying that he was hitting her. Just reports of her hitting him. But again, the man who originally reported the incident on his 911 call, he is talking about the man hitting the girl and that's what he had saw. So that's the best that we have and the knowledge on that whole time that he got pulled over by the police. So from August 13th to August 24th, we really don't have any details about the trip. We do know though that on the night of August 24th, the two of them stayed at a hotel near the Salt Lake City International Airport. They stayed at a hotel that night. Everything seemed to be fine. This is the last day that she FaceTimed her mom. She told her mom that they were going to Grand Teton National Park and that was the last like face-to-face -face interaction that she had with her mom. So that is where our story starts picking up. So from 824 to 827, Gabby's mom reports that she was still receiving text messages from her daughter and everything seemed to be okay. Her mom thought the text messages were a little strange because it's not stuff that Gabby would typically send. However, the really strange text came on 827. Let's talk about the day 827. 
The only thing we have on 827 is an eyewitness and the restaurant saying that they saw both Gabby and Brian eating at the restaurant that day. And then on the 27th, the same day that they were found eating together, Gabby sends a text message to her mom that says, and I'm going to read this quote, Can you help Stan? I just keep getting his voicemails and missed calls. Now, Stan is the name of Gabby's grandpa, and her mom said that she would never call him Stan. She always called him grandpa, something along the lines of that, but that she would never, ever call him Stan. So at that point, her mom, and this is according to all the reports, her mom thought something was a little strange and off with that, with that text message, and is actually wondering if Gabby actually sent that text message, because to her mom, that just seems really bizarre that she would call her grandfather Stan. 827. They went to the restaurant. She texted this strange text message about her grandpa to her mom. And that is the last time that we have any reports of anyone seeing Gabby, unfortunately. And on September 1st, what is that? From the 27th to the 1st, so three, four days later, Brian, with the van that they were traveling in, which is Gabby's van, but he returns back to his home in Florida where the two of them had been living with his parents. But of course, he returned with no Gabby. He didn't report her missing. Nothing like that. He didn't talk to her parents from everything we understand. He didn't say anything. And then on September 11th, her parents hadn't heard from her. So they go ahead and they report her missing. And what gets fishy, really fishy right now, is that Brian at this time, instead of being helpful, instead of trying to find his girlfriend or talking to the press, anything like that, talking to the police would have been helpful, trying to help the police find Gabby. No, he hires an attorney and the attorney advises him to stay silent so he doesn't say a single word. Then on Tuesday, September 14th, he goes missing. Okay, now this is going to get really interesting because this is where Brian's parents come in. And remember, Gabby had been living with them for some time. So you would think that they had taken her under their wing and, and were, you know, looking after her. And she was supposedly the love of Brian's life. And so the parents, you would think, were getting along with her. But the parents seem very suspicious on this, too. So Brian goes missing on Tuesday, September 14th. I guess he takes a backpack, says he's going to go off on a hike. Now, there is a nature reserve that is very nearby their house. It's really only about 20 minutes away. And Brian would typically go there and hike, so they didn't think anything of it at the time, supposedly. So he goes there, and he doesn't come home that night. So the parents go there. This is what they've told the police now. The parents go to the nature reserve on Wednesday. They see his car there. They think, okay, well, I guess he's still out hiking and they leave the car there, okay? So then, on Thursday, they go back to the nature reserve and go pick up his car. If you think everything's fine with your son out hiking and camping in a place that he's been, you know, a lot of times before hiking and camping, why would you take his car away? You would think that he would be coming back to his car, right? So, they don't report him missing that day, though. They pick up his car on a Thursday, according to them, and then they wait until the very next day to report him missing. That, I'm sorry, but if my son went hiking with just a backpack, maybe he's an avid hiker. I'm not going to take his car away from him. You know, how is he going to get home if he does come back to his car? And... I'm, I'm going to be reporting him missing probably on Wednesday when I see the car there and there's no Brian. But they picked his car up first. Instead of having the police come and check it out for any clues or anything else. Nope. They picked his car up, according to them, took it home, and didn't bother reporting him missing until the very next day. Now, I don't know about you, but that really bothered me. And the parents haven't seemed to be really cooperative, but... At this point in the investigation, they don't exactly have to cooperate. It's really kind of strange how this is set out. Right now, Brian is just named as a missing person. Um, he is a person of interest in Gabby's disappearance. He is not considered a murder suspect. So the police, after he was reported missing, have gone out now and are doing this huge search of this major, major nature reserve. But since he is just a 
person of interest in the case, they can't bring him in. They can't arrest him. They can't do anything with him, according to all the lawyers. That's just... They can stop by and say, hi, you doing okay? And kind of do like a welfare check if they ever do find him in these swamps. But they can't even bring him in. Right now, he's just a person of interest. Now, when he becomes... And, oh, and while he's a person of interest, anyone who is helping him hide or harboring him, they're not in trouble either. It's not until he becomes a murder suspect in Gabby's case that they can arrest him, that they can... Um, track him down better and that anyone who is harboring him can get in trouble for harboring him and they can have consequences too and charges brought up on them. So on the same day that they report him missing, which was September 17th, it was that Friday. Remember again, he went missing on Tuesday. So on that same day, a TikToker came out her name is Miranda Baker, and she said that on 829, so that was two days after Gabby and Brian had ate at the restaurant, two days after that, they picked up a hitchhiker that they believe was Brian Laundry, and that he was by himself. He was very polite and kind and grateful for the ride, but he was by himself. They picked him up. They, they took him to a parking lot. He basically got in his car and left before they could even turn their head to see that he had gone. So that's the situation there. In case some of you are wondering, you know, how the TikToker got involved, she's saying that she did pick him up. So we do have that clue to this case. And then on September 20th in Grand Teton National Park at a campsite, the police that have been searching this whole time for Gabby, and they're also out searching for Brian, but that have been searching this whole time for Gabby, they actually discover Gabby's body. And the autopsy has come out, not the full autopsy, but her death has been ruled a homicide. So, I mean, putting the facts together, I'm not going to say it's Brian, but it definitely could be Brian. After the body was discovered, the FBI was raided his home where, again, him and Gabby lived with his parents. So they were raiding the home, looking for cell phones, looking for laptops, looking for any information. That's kind of where everything is at right now. There's not really any more information. The police are searching desperately that wildlife reserve, trying to find Brian. They're even searching in the water. Would he have gone out and like killed himself or something out of guilt? We don't know. You know, he's been out there now for what, 10 days or so, 10, 11 days, more than that now. So 11, 12 days or so he's been out there. Um, interesting, but is he even out there? Did the parents even tell the truth? I don't know. I don't know. It just seems crazy, but I wanted all of you guys to have a timeline put together because I wanted a timeline put together and I figured I would share it with you guys. I figured with all the details that just keep coming out and coming out and coming out that you guys were probably just as confused as I was because every now and then they would throw a new little detail here and throw a new little detail there and I wanted a full timeline on what was going on. So if you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. I do some true crime stuff. I do mostly haunted and paranormal stuff though. And that's what's gonna be coming up next is I'm going to be doing the spirit box. We're gonna try and reach out to Gabby. I have two spirit guides that I talk to frequently and they help me reach out to people on the other side. So we're gonna try and get some answers from them. Now, are they always correct? Um, They've been wrong once, so, and it was a really big wrong when I was trying to find a missing little child. Uh, so I have a hard time finding missing children or doing anything like that uh, because I, I, I want to make sure that I get all the facts straight and everything like that. But we're going to ask them and see if we can get Gabby to come and talk to us. Uh, they'll go out and get her for us, make sure that she's okay, make sure that she's crossed over, make sure that she's with her family, and that she's doing all right. So we're going to do that. We're going to do that in the next video coming up. So don't forget to subscribe because you don't want to miss that one. I'm sure it's going to be amazing. And I hope everyone's doing good. I love you and I will talk to you soon. Bye.